Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. For me, the Boxer is the best breed, the most fantastic breed, because they are very loyal and intelligent and they fit right into a family. My name is Susan Burnett, and I've been in boxers for over 20 years. When my husband and I first got married, we had Great Danes and started to have our family with the Danes, and did it went well, but our son wanted to have his own dog. So my husband's a veterinarian and talked about what would be the best breed, more of a medium-large dog, and he very much liked the boxers because they're very stoic when they're being examined, and they were uh, pretty trustworthy in the office, and he thought that would be a good choice. So we got Amelia and she was from a, a backyard breeder. And what I really liked about Amelia and, and picking her out was when we went to pick her as a puppy, the father of the dogs, the puppies, and the mother were both on the property. And the father was playing out in the yard and the puppies were running loose and he ran and got a big beach towel and he stood in the middle of the yard and all the puppies ran up and he waited and he's looking at them and they each grab a hold and he, ran through the yard, gentle for a dog. And they were flinging around and running, chasing, and barking, and they stopped and he did it again with them. I was very impressed that an adult dog would be that comfortable to want to play with the pups and they have a good relationship. So we had Amelia and from there we went on to, Amelia lived to be 14 years of age and I waited a year and then I decided I wanted to get into show boxers, <laughs> which might have been a mistake. No, it wasn't. I, I very, very much enjoy it. Uh, and I got Biscuit, and she's named after Sea Biscuit. I think a boxer, when they run, are absolutely gorgeous. The stride, when it's correct, is amazing. And to me, they look like a racehorse. So um, we've had her, we had her for 10 years. For me, the boxer is the best breed, the most fantastic breed because they are very loyal and intelligent and they fit right into a family. They actually make themselves a member of the family versus being the family dog. They're great with children um, and they enjoy being with the family either indoors or outdoors. They're a very active and athletic dog, can go wherever the family goes, um, which I would encourage anyone who has a boxer, if they're going camping or um, biking, hiking, walking, whatever. They really like to be with a family member and, they, and be active. We've had poodles and we've had Shih Tzus and um, they were sweet little dogs, but they were very comfortable going upstairs and laying on the bed and being by themselves. A boxer has a tendency to want to be with you, not necessarily right under your feet, but will follow you from room to room to really be a part of what, what activity you're involved in. Um, genetically, boxers are bred from bulldogs, so they have that playful kind of attitude. And they're from Germany originally, and were uh, involved in police work over there. They are part of the working group, but the big joke with boxers is their work is playing, which they enjoy doing. Um, they are very prey driven for the most part, so you can do activities such as, as a lure course, um, sheep herding, anything that involves playing and having fun. What you have to keep in mind with a boxer though is that you don't want to overheat them. That you always need to have water available. You do need to be careful with how much water you give them because they are a deep chested dog and you wouldn't want to uh, have any problems with bloat or torsion with the, with the stomach. The activities that I enjoy with my boxers is um, biking. And when I'm able to, I do like to take them sheep herding. Um, it is and also a barn hunt, which involves them hunting for the, the rats that are in little containers. They're safe. It is amazing to see a dog be a dog. It's a lot of fun to see the, them have that prey drive, get very excited, and, and act like a dog out there. Very athletic, though. It's, it's enjoyable to watch. A boxer can be appropriate for any age group, any person who's looking for a dog that likes to have fun. What's important, though, is that you pick the right age of the dog for you. A puppy up to the age of 18 months of age is very active, needs someone who can exercise them. It's very important if you're going to have a boxer as your pet that you're able to keep them in the home on a regular basis. They are very social. They want to be part of the family and part of what they're doing. Um, our history in our family is that the dog always sleeps in bed with us or with the children. They make, they're very warm and they stay in place. It's 
a boxer is not the kind of dog that you can put out in the backyard and leave alone. If you leave them out there by themselves for a long time and you go off for a while, they will find ways to keep themselves busy and they'll come home and not be, and you'll be a little bit disappointed in what they've done with the yard. They are very social and I, I really can't say that enough. If you're gonna have a boxer and you're going to not be at home a lot, maybe that isn't the dog for you. Or if you're in and out, two boxers are actually the best. They make, the companionship is important to them. But being in the home is also important because they are a good guard dog. But they're going to guard what they think is their home, the family home. If you stick them out in the yard all the time, that's their home. That's what they're going to protect. If you keep them in home, pardon me, you keep them in the house, any kind of problem, they're going to protect you and the house because that's their home. Having a boxer in the house is nice, but you do have to be aware of the fact they um, are counter surfers, so you've got to be careful when you're, what you're putting out to defrost you're going to have for dinner, or they will have it before you can get to it. They um, have a tendency to jump on the furniture, but can be taught that that's inappropriate, as long as they have their own chair that they can sleep on in the room, or one of, one of the beds. Um, as far as having small children visit, I would have the child sitting down before I had the dogs come in to greet them because they, they do like to get um, a little bit excited and joyful when they see someone new. With boxers, as with a lot of large and medium large breeds, um, we have all hardwood floors or tile. It, if there's any kind of situation, it cleans up easily, and they don't have the hair that a long hair like German Shepherd. You don't have tufts of hair laying around, but they do shed, and it's much easier to clean up and keep the house clean that way. My husband's a veterinarian, and we had um, discussions where I disagreed with him on using crates for the dogs. Um, it took a few years and a few things being destroyed till I realized he was right. It makes for a much safer environment for the dog when we leave. Um, if we're going to be gone for any amount of time to the grocery store, going to the movies or out to dinner, the dogs are put in their crates. I, you do need to have a, a nice sized one where they can stand up, turn around, and, and feel comfortable. It leaves them in a safe environment and leaves your house in a safe environment while you're gone. As far as leaving the dogs outside, I never leave the dogs outside if I'm going to leave the premises. I just don't think it's a safe way to leave them. As the dogs mature, they seem to be a little bit more trustworthy. And at this point, Charlie, who's um, six, he gets to stay on his chair while we go out. Um, and he does, he sleeps there the whole time guarding the house, I'm sure, but he doesn't get himself into any trouble. I think it's important when you have a boxer that you do have them socialize and they have good manners because they do have a tendency to get excited and jump around. So we try to have the dogs not get on the furniture other than their chair and of course their um, cushions that they sleep on. Since a boxer is such an active dog, it's very important that they have boundaries when they're in the home. And part of those in our home is that they stay off the furniture unless it's their cushion or their chair that they can sleep on. They have to be invited up to the bed at night with the one who's going to sleep with us. And uh, no counter surfing. And for that, they, do, they will be um, punished as far as being sent out of, the, out of the kitchen. We don't offer table scraps. Pancreatitis is something that you want to avoid in all breeds and especially in boxers. Our schedule is Buster Posey wakes up at 5.30 every morning to tell us that it's morning and that it's time to wake up and go outside so the dogs are let out. And then I used to feed them at 5.30, but I thought that was a little bit early. So we've got Buster down to 7 o'clock in the morning, which he will start to bark again because then it's time to eat. We feed them twice a day at 7 in the morning and 5 at night. And it's important because they are a, a deep-chested dog, as I've stated before, to avoid bloat, you don't want to overfeed at one time. So you, you feed, we feed twice a day, and it is important also that when you feed them that they haven't been panting or, or working out. They need to be calm, in a calm state when they eat. After the dogs are fed in the morning, I wait a period of time, about 30 minutes, and then I will let them out back to play and run and do whatever they need to do. Uh, you like to take them either mid-morning and or uh, late afternoon on a bike ride if I can. And then after dinner, we would bathe a half hour, let them out again. And they usually are down for the night between 8 and 8.30. I live on a nice street and it is 
amazing how many people walk by with their dogs in the evening, especially in the summertime. And when we first moved here, I really enjoyed walking the dogs too. But as I have matured, um, I've got recitis in my shoulder and I find that walking the dog, sometimes it, they pull and need to be corrected, it, it does give me pain. So I've replaced walking the dog with the biking. Um, it's very important if you get an extension for your bike that you check it out and make sure that it's a, a good, reliable one. Um, I have had some that have snapped off. The one I have now I really enjoy. And the dogs seem to enjoy that kind of exercise. We're also a dog of multiple, uh, pardon me, a household of multiple dogs. And they do play a lot in the backyard um, and run off a lot of energy. And they're very active and get good exercise doing that. My friends come over, well, some are boxer people, but I always encourage anyone who visits when you ha have a boxer out that um, they not speak in a real high voice and get the dog even more excited. Dogs are very social and they are very excited to meet you, so the last thing they need is for you to get them even, even more wound up. So talk in a normal voice and to not wave your arms around a lot in front of them, even though I know you're very excited to see them too. They will drool when you, if, you're, if you're eating and they're sitting next to you, especially if it's chicken or something they can really smell. They'll, they'll little bits. Um, or if, when I'm mixing up their food at night, they'll look at me and I can see bubbles on the side. But overall, they're not droolers, not like the Danes. According to the AKC, the boxer breed is considered a clean breed because they have a nice, short, tight coat. They, um, they do need to be brushed and you've got to clean up after that. What I find is important is after they eat, I always take a wipe and clean underneath their eyes and around their mouth because they will hold, they have a bit of a jowl and you can get food particles stuck in there. It keeps them a little bit cleaner. The reality of having a boxer as a member of your home and in your, in your house most of the time is that they are very protective. So anyone who comes to the door, rings the doorbell, they are going to bark. Um, if it's a male and I'm home alone, I will have to put the dog away because he will want to be very protective. Of course, I'll check first to make sure that it's a safe situation. As a family, if you're planning on a vacation, of course, what I find with boxers, what works better is if you have a house sitter come in, if you can afford it, or someone come by and walk them. They do much better if you're going to be gone for a period of time, three days, five days a week. They do much better if they're in their own environment. They'll eat better, do all that better. And um, it, for, for our family, it works out the best. As a boxer breeder, it has been my pleasure to meet many wonderful people coming to see the puppies. I try to um, get from the people the information on whether the activity level is going to match the activity level of the dog. Boxer puppies up to about the age of 18 months are very active. They need to be in a family or home situation where someone can be active with them, walking them, playing them, socializing them. And then as the dog matures, they might be more appropriate for an older couple, which I was lucky enough to have come and visit. Um, they stayed in the apartment at our above our garage for three days, a couple from Oregon. They were in their early 70s. I had my questions about whether they would be appropriate for her, but they fell in love with Bibi. She was two years old and needed a home. And she is now eight years old and she gets walked on a daily basis multiple times by the owner. And she's been on their uh, fishing boat and had her own life vest with her name embroidered on it. She's had a wonderful life, a better life probably than I could have given her. And I, I consider that a true blessing as being a breeder, to seeing a puppy go to a wonderful home and then seeing a mature dog who you, you know needed it more than you could give him and you found the people that could do it. So what's important with a boxer is that you're mat matching the activity level of the dog to the activity level of the person that's going to have them in their home. In our household, we've had boxers with Great Danes and boxers with toy poodles and a Shih Tzu and didn't have any problems. Years ago, we did have a house cat with the boxers and that was fine. At this point in time, I would not choose to bring in a kitten or a cat because boxers are very prey driven and that might not end so well. But as far as starting with a, a boxer puppy, um, introducing it to a cat or a kitten, there shouldn't be a problem. It's really important to not overfeed them. They will eat, many of them, and eat and eat and eat. And they will get very large and it's hard on their joints 
and their lifespan will be shortened. So it's important to watch the diet and to exercise them. It's important that you have a diet, whether it's raw or dry kibble, that meets their true nutri nutritional needs. Um, you don't have to buy the most expensive, but you really don't want to try to really cut corners on their diet and not meet their needs and then have other things come up, um, obesity, conditions of the coat, ears, allergies, whatever. All breeds have their diseases, and the concerns with the boxer breed are cardiac issues, DM, which is a neuro condition of the spine, which is like ALS in human beings, and then cancers. What, as a breeder, what we can check for and test for genetically are some of the cardiac issues and also for the DM. Um, when we go to breed a dog, we also do a, a, a cardiac echo on the dog and also a 24-hour monitoring of the dog. It's important for people when they are going to purchase a boxer puppy that they ask their breeder if these things have been done and then get the test results. Unfortunately, when DM strikes a dog, it is in their latter years, usually over seven years of age, just when you think they're the best thing ever. And it, um, it debilitates them to the point where you need to put them to sleep, put them down. They don't get the longevity or the quality of life. It's very important it's very important to me as a boxer owner and a breeder that anyone who purchases a dog knows the DM status of the puppy. Um, pu puppies, boxers, whatever dog, hopefully you make them a member of your family. And you should know that you have a healthy puppy coming in and so that possibly you'll have longevity with that dog and an enjoyable experience for the whole family. I am a dog lover and an animal person, and boxers are my breed, they have my heart. I love their joy of living, their loyalty, their intelligence, their activity, their athleticism, and what they bring out in me. I would encourage anyone who feels that they want a dog that's full of activity and loyalty and love to look into a boxer. But what's nice is, I believe, that when you look at a dog or a puppy, they pick you. I really do believe that. And if you do your homework and you look into it, you'll know which breed is right for you. For me, it's the boxer and all the things that I can do with them. The barn hunt, the rally, the obedience, which I don't do but wish I did. The show confirmation, watch them run and turn. They're beautiful animals. I just love boxers.